Welcome back to the 200 challenge. We have 14 kilos left to the target, so I don't have to tell you it's going really well. Today is fender bender, meaning we're gonna dig into the fenders, we're gonna dig into the doors. In the end, we're gonna take the bumpers off, strip the car bare naked, essentially gonna be a chassis left. We're also gonna look into the heating system of the car, see if there's anything left of that, see if we can be smart about that. Fender bender. Rear bumper removal, I started the backwards way of doing this this time. I don't know why I did that. Uh, really, you just have to, to drop the, the little screws on the side and these little mounts here. Once you've done that, this, this is what's left. These two big uh, Allen bolts here. I don't know how long these have been here, probably since the car was new. As always, it help, helps with the right tools. Up here is an interesting part. This is where the heat comes up through the heat exchangers. It comes into this, this hose here. Uh, when the heat is not on, it will actually dump the heat over here. So I'm gonna remove this since the car is not gonna have heat after it goes through this uh, rather extensive surgery. Uh, when you take these out, you see it's a big piece like this. What lurks in behind here is a tube that goes all the way to the front. This pipe then goes all the way through the car here, all the way, it sits with these clamps here, and then it goes up to here. This pipe then sits behind this little cover here. So you can see, that's the pipe we just dropped. So from here, we can actually now pull this pipe out. It's not terribly easy, but if you're gentle and you twist a little bit back and forward, you'll get it up. So as you can see, this is another one of these anacondas that seems to live in this car in various places. Need to release the trailing arm and it is tight to say the least. So we fabricated a little tool here with a little counter support here. Let's see if this works. Yes, it's loose, it's loose, it's loose. When you don't have the proper tools, you fabricate them. Here's another area where great power is needed to, to untie the uh, inner spring plate. So let's see. Yeah, it's coming. Okay, time to drop the rear trailing arm and the suspension here. We've loosened the, the, the coilovers here and everything else is loose. So let's see if we can let it go. That's how it's done. I'm down under. I need to clear out everything that is something at all in here, meaning all these fuel pipes going upstairs, the ABS sensor wires here. I need to get the, the brake wires out, the, the power cables here, everything down here that is anything at all. Everything needs to go. I got the fuel pipe assembly out here. Uh, wanted to show you something. One of the things that I'm taking out in my build is this center pipe here. And if you remember in one of the old episodes, I spoke about this, this emission thing where you have a vent pipe that just vents the top of the fuel tank. It's actually this, this hefty pipe here. Looks like this and goes all the way out to the outer fender here where you have a carbon canister. I'm going to show you that in a second here. Next up, I'm going to go after the carbon canister, which is in the left rear wheelhouse here. It just sits under these, these cover plates here. This is how the carbon canister looks. So this has to do with emissions. What it does is it takes the fumes that come from the top of the, uh, the expansion tank above the fuel tank and it sucks it into this carbon canister and then it sucks it back and then it goes to the intake manifold. Premium. 
After a lot of tinkering around here and there, I think I'm actually done back here. I have the, uh, the pipes here for the uh, uh, C4, the AVD. I'm just gonna cut these out because they're not reusable. Other than that, I have everything else out here. <laughs> that just about does it for the back here. I think I've got absolutely everything that matters out. Let's have a look at the door, shall we? Time to get the doors out. You can either release them by, by taking these sprints out or you can take the hinges out. Since I'm gonna change the door to plastic doors with the, with the full cage here, uh, I'm just gonna take the hinges off. They're rather heavy, so I'm gonna use this to be quick about it so that he doesn't have to stand there and struggle. We're gonna start in the front. There's uh, an inner cover here that we're gonna drop first. After that is out, time to drop the bumper. So we're thinking that the only thing holding the bumper now is these bolts on the inside here where we attached the ones covering the, the sides. So we're gonna see if we can take it off now. It's not but I'm awesome. With the bumper off, we get access to the impact beam here, an aluminum beam to, that is supposed to absorb the, the energy as you hit someone else. This needs to go off as well. I'm going to reuse this, of course, as a safety measure. Uh, some people, they take some weight out of this one. I don't know what I'm going to do with this one. Working our way through loosening all the bolts around here to, to get the fenders off. And uh, it's uh, a few fantastic things here with, with how they attach the fenders. This is one here. You see, they've completely coated this bolt here with undercoating or body or whatever you call it. So you have to cut all of that away before you can loosen the bolt. Here's another great looking area. So they put this, this coating on top of all of the bolts here and it is Really difficult to get off, so what I've done is I've just taken a small little screwdriver and just try to cut my way around it. And once I've done that, I'll actually take the, the socket and bang it onto the bolt and then just take it out. So after I've done this, I will have to cut around the fender here to make sure the fender releases. I'm using this just to pry away some small little pieces. I'm using this to, to, to cut the seal and then this to pry this in between and try to just separate the seal. And as you see, it's loose in the bottom here. I don't want to move it too much. I don't want to bend the fender here. Another nice little feature from the assembly process is that it's tack welded just here. So I'm gonna have to, to grind that away before I take the fender off. So I'm trying to loosen up this, this seam here. It's full of this fantastic goo as well, of course. Uh, to my help, I have this little guy here. I'm just cutting the, the seal here with this one. And then I figured out that if you take a little bit of label off and you put it down here, that will kind of seep into the joint. And then you can just take this and it's easy as this. I've been at this maybe for, I, I would say an hour now. I've cut this seal in every conceivable way I can come up with. And I'm, I'm careful prying it off because I, I don't want to break this, this nice fender here. Actually, I, think, I think I can take it away. Whoa. Oh, there we go. Whoa. Fender is now off. And this is what lurks behind. The, the difficulty with getting it off is you can cut down here, but then it's really difficult to access here. Uh, I'm gonna take out the steel brush and brush a little bit here and see if I have any holes here. It doesn't look like it, but I'll have a look just in case. I think actually this one will make it. It's a little bit of surface rust here.
I'm, I'm just now working on getting the ignition lock out of the car here because without that I can't really release the steering column here and that obviously needs to, to go out if I'm going to get to the next step with just this complete bare strip. This sits with these anti-theft bolts which uh, you have to drill them out. I don't have a really perfect way of doing this so what I'm doing is I, I just have a spot weld remover here. I'm going to see if I can gently drill it out using that. Not sure it's going to work but let's, let's give it a go. Of course, the first attempt just went straight towards the side, so I'm gonna try with a different thing, just a straight drill and try to go diagonally back. I don't think it's gonna work, but yeah. Okay, next attempt, screwdriver. I'm gonna see if I can bang it. This is not easy. I, I think I made my way through this one here. It, this one kind of just dances around on the, the this break off bolt here. I loosened up the, the last little bolt here and then I just pried it a little bit and actually it came loose. You see this this is how it sits. It's got these break off bolts here that I'll have to take off using a vise or something like that. Uh, or pliers or something. And I managed to get it off without hurting it at all. So I just used a spot weld remover like that and just drilled it out. Here's another brilliant thing that I didn't expect. This is the steering column here and you see these bolts here? You can see them on the inside here as well. They're actually break off bolts as well. So for the pedal box here, we've got one, two, three, four bolts. You have to get the, the clutch pipe here loosened on the bottom. You have to get throttle wire out, wire out. Once you have that, you should be able to just pick this thing out. And that's how it went on for, for quite a while to get absolutely everything out of the car. And I know I told my wife here that it was going to take one day. Uh, to, to just get everything out of the car. It ended up taking the better part of every evening of a full week So really it is a lot of stuff and for those of you who have uh, ever wanted to see how a 964 looks without the actual car This is how it looks It is covering Absolutely everywhere of the entire garage So with that it's scoring time so, time for the fenders. Eight kilos. I did check the other one as well. It's about eight kilos as well, so it's 16 in total. The carbon fiber alternative to this is about half, which means I'm down eight kilos just on the fenders. Coming up, the Anaconda Nest. The, the heat tubes going from the back to the front with all the flaps and valves and whatnot. That's another five, so we're up to 13 with that. The uh, little cover plates, carbon canisters, some, some pipes that were left for the C4, another two kilos. So we actually all in all found 15 kilos doing that. There's a, lot, not, a few other bits and bobs here and there, I didn't take those in, but the observant watcher will have noticed that I have not taken the doors into account and they are big beasts. Uh, the reason for that is I need to transfer some of the parts from these to the new plastic doors. I don't have the plastic doors here yet. So I, I want to make sure that what I do here is reasonably accurate. Uh, I will tell you how much the doors are though, so you get a feeling for that. So the doors, they are actually 31 kilos. So uh, as soon as I can transfer the parts from this that I'll need on the new doors, we're in for a pretty big saving there as well. That is the end of episode 14. We found 15 kilos today, meaning that we've actually passed the target and next episode is minus one. Not bad. Next time around, we're going to look at how we strip all the paint, all the undercoating, all that goodies out of the car. You will have noticed that the car's actually already left, so you'll see why in the next episode. It's going to be really fun. For those of you who haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Your feedback means a lot to me. The reason I'm doing this is all about giving back to the Porsche community. So everyone watching, thank you very much.